That's for you, Cameron Hill. Congratulations. You made it to the review video. And all of you better thank uh, Miss Jane in 7th period because um, I might have forgotten to do the old review video if it wasn't for her reminding me on Edmodo. So here we go. Let's talk about um, taxonomy. That's what we've been talking about for the last week and a half if you've been sleeping, which I mean, how could you? It's biology. It's like the most fun part of your day. Um, so, really, guys, I mean, we went over some stuff in class today a little bit together. Um, so I'm not going to have this be real long, so let's get to it. So remember some of the big ideas. Um, we talked about the taxonomic categories. Okay, We call them taxa. Uh, and it goes from very, very broad to very, very specific. So kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. Kingdom being the very most broad. Like I said in class, we're in the same kingdom as, a, say, a jellyfish. Um, but then as soon as you go to phylum, we separate out. So the lower you go, the more and more specific you get by the organism's characteristics and even by their genetics sometimes. But mainly what scientists use is, is physical characteristics, um, morphology, to put organisms in groups, okay? Um, so kingdom, again, most specific species. I'm sorry, kingdom, most general, species, most specific. Um, so that's that. You know, why do we use a standardized taxonomic system? There's a couple questions about that. The biggest reason is, like we again, like we talked about in class, um, to unify the scientific community. You know, there's no language barrier. Every scientist knows what they're talking about when you say uh, canis lupus. You know, they know you're talking about a, you know, gray wolf. Um, so, um, again, that standardized way of using scientific names, using Latin to create those scientific names, that, that really unifies the, um, the scientific community. Um, dichotomous keys, we've worked on those for a couple days. It seems like y'all really have a good idea of what's going on with those. There is one question with the dichotomous key. There's some other questions that, this is a little bit odd, but to me I think they're even easier than a regular dichotomous key. Um, so basically it looks something like this, where it, it is more of a chart that guides you. And the question will say, like, which group of organisms does not produce spores and is photosynthetic? So you would just kind of follow the chart to get to the correct answer. So um, hopefully that's not too difficult for you. Um, so, you know, again, why do we use a standard taxonomic system to maintain a common language to name organisms? Um, what is, what does taxonomy involve? It involves, um, you know, the, the, um, classification of organisms based on similarities. Okay. You put them in a hierarchical system. So again, that, that hierarchy they're talking about is the whole kingdom all the way down to, um, to species. Um, But, um, you know, remember, the more of those taxa groups that organisms share, the closer they are related to each other. Um, so if, you know, you have a group of three organisms and it shows you what taxa they're in, and then it asks you what, which two are the most closely related, you'll be able to, um, to see that by seeing which ones have the most of those categories that match. So if they're in the same kingdom, they're in the same phylum, they're in the same class, um, then you know they're going to be pretty close related. Um, one of these little darlings. I didn't see a lot of pictures of those, but those things are those are what protists look like. So the one here, that would be like an amoeba. That would be like a paramecium. Um, so the little cilia that it has around it, it would use those to kind of move around. Amoeba is kind of like squish and extend and so they have these things called pseudopods um, kind of false hands basically false feet um, 
that help them move around. They kind of kind of shrink and expand and kind of uh, kind of like a blob, kind of moving around. Um, they're pretty cool. Uh, what makes organisms in the diagram different? Oh, oh yeah. So basically, again, I think we most classes we talked about this one, but what makes a bacteria different than a protist? You know, they're both single-celled. They both can be autotrophic or heterotrophic. What's the big difference between a, ba a bacteria and a protist would be protists are eukaryotic and bacteria are um, prokaryotic. So it's the whole idea that protists have a nucleus, protists have membrane-bound organelles. They're more advanced cells. Okay, they're bigger. All right. Um, what does the word diverge mean? If organisms are diverging away from each other, what does that mean? Go ahead, I'll wait. Oh, um, yeah. So it means like, like I just said, they go away from each other. If two organisms that were once, you know, related or, or even, you know, were one species and then they diverge, they went away from each other for some reason. Um, so another one of those weird chart ones. Really, there's only 20 questions, so there's not, you know. It's really about it. Um, if you have me sixth or seventh, you can come in at win tutorials. Uh, other than that, come in the morning. Don't really know what else. I mean, I think we did a pretty good job covering some stuff in class, and y'all y'all seem to really understand this unit. So I'm expecting really good scores. So um, anyway, let me know if y'all have any questions, and we'll we'll play you out to a classic um, '90s '90s rock. Peace.